In this video, I'm going to accomplish a couple of things. We're going to walk through building a histogram with the data analysis tool pack. This is slightly different from the pivot table approach, which I detail in another video. Um, also, we are going to compare many distributions using a one graph with several series and percent polygons. So let's get started. To use a data analysis tool pack, you'll need to add it. There is a link for the video showing you how to do that. Under data analysis, we are going to use the histogram option. What the histogram option is going to do is it's going to count uh, occurrences for us within a certain bin. So before we even get started, actually, let's add our bins. A bin is a range between which Excel is going to count occurrences in the data over here. So in this case for grades, I'm going to use bins 0, 0.1, and I'm going to go ahead and use our click and drag option here to let it count all the way up to 1 and just a little bit beyond. To have a good looking graph, it's always great to have a zeroed out uh, column on each side. That is a bin on each side with no observations. And I'll show you what that looks like in a second. But once we have our data, and once we have our bins, we can begin to count the number of observations that fall between 0 and 0.1, and between uh, 0.1 and 0.2, etc. So once again, data, data analysis, histogram. It's asking us for input here. So we're going to use the pop out button. I'm going to clear out the references there. And I'm just going to hit Control Home. And we want to do exam one first. So I will hit Control Shift down, which will highlight all of the data uh, until there's a, a gap. And that's my input range, the data I want to count from. Now the bin range, I'm going to click on bin and hit control shift down. These numbers establish the boundaries of the ranges that we want to count within. I've indicated labels because I selected both E1 and the label bin. Um, we're going to click the chart output option so that we will get a histogram instantly. And I'm going to, rather than the default, which would be a new worksheet, I'm going to use a specified output range. Hitting Control Home, I'm just going to look for a little space here, and I'm going to put it in I2, and say OK. And what Excel has done is it has said uh, that there is, there are rather no outcomes below zero. There are no outcomes below 0.1 but above zero, etc. And interestingly, there's this more on the end here. What that says is that there are no observations that fall outside of all of our bins. So I'm going to actually delete that. It can cause us problems later. You'll also notice that Excel has produced a histogram for us. Um, if we're going to compare distributions that may have a different number of observations, relative frequency is preferable to frequency. I'm going to hit Control C and click in the cell and hit Control V and change the label from frequency to relative frequency. Now to calculate relative frequency, relative frequency or probability is the number of occurrences divided by the total number of occurrences. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the total number of occurrences by going to the Home tab and clicking on the Auto Sum. So in our data over here, I have 64 outcomes for exam one. And uh, let's go ahead and label this exam one. By highlighting these three under the Home tab, I'm going to use the Merge and Center button to make this essentially one giant uh, column. And I'm going to type exam one because we're going to look at the distributions for several outcomes, exam one, exam two, exam three, and the grade. Now, um, revisiting this relative frequency calculation, uh, it's simply equal to the number of outcomes divided by the total number of possible outcomes. Now I'm going to click and drag and copy this later, so I'm going to lock the cell reference using the F4 key. 
but I'm going to hit it once more because I want to, while I want to continue to reference the 16th row, uh, I'm going to want to shift this reference for my later um, tables. So I'll hit F4 twice, locking the 16 in the reference. And then when I click and drag it down, double clicking in the little extension box here, you can see it always looks at that 16th row. If I drag it over one, however, it will continue to look at the 16th row, but it will follow while I drag, and that'll come in handy when we copy that in a second. Okay, so that's exam one. We've got a, a simple histogram. Uh, to be a true histogram, you would want to get rid of the gaps between the columns, but it's close enough to get an understanding of what's going on with the data. Let's do that again for exam two. So once again, data, data analysis, histogram, OK. We're going to reset the input range to be the range of exam two. I clicked on the label exam two and hit control shift down. Popping back in, the bin range will be the same. Labels, now we're going to change where we want this thing to show up and control home. I will arrow over to, I'm going to give myself a spacer here to differentiate between the different uh, series or the, or the different outcomes and uh, put it on the second row and say OK. And just like that, we have the results for exam two. Once again, we have a table here. Um, because of the way that we set this up, I can simply copy this and paste it and get a count of these uh, occurrences in case it's different. Also, I can copy and paste this entire set of results and it will calculate for me automatically. Double clicking and hitting escape just to check those. Uh, I'll also copy the label and I'll change exam 1 to exam 2. And that could be done here as well by double clicking and just add an E1 so that we don't lose track of which histogram is which. All right, I'm going to click on L to highlight this column and I'm going to use uh, put my cursor right between the two columns and resize this to one and that way I have a nice little space there without losing track of what's going on. So you may have guessed it, but we're going to do the process again for both exam three and the grade. I will save you the painful details and kind of do it at speed. Feel free to back up or pause if you need to.
Now just to give us a little perspective here, I'm going to hit control and use the roller on my mouse to zoom out a little bit. So we've got these nice charts, which of course we could fine tune to whatever extent we wanted to. If you want to see how to fine tune a chart, uh, there is another video on my channel called Common Charts and Graphs that will show you how to do that. But the second purpose of this video, besides learning how to use the histogram tool in the data analysis tool pack, is to see how to compare several distributions in one graph. So we're going to do that now. We are going to insert a scatter type plot and we're going to use this jagged line plot with the dots. This is what's known as a percent polygon. And they're great for comparing distributions. So we get this blank chart. We're going to go to select data and we're going to add one series at a time to this chart. Each series will be a line. Each series represents an outcome. So we'll add exam one first and that goes in the name. The X values um, include the bins. Do not highlight any text input or it will disassociate uh, the, the values from the values in the graph. And for our Y variable, that will be the vertical axis relative frequency. And say OK. Add another one. Put in the name. Put in the X axis values. And put in the Y values. And do another. and one more. You can see the graph below developing as we are inputting data. Okay, now I should have done this originally, but it's always good to delete these because if you use the control shift down method of highlighting, if you have a lot of bins, then it, you're very apt to highlight the word more, which will once again um, put your data out of uh, the location that it should be in the graph. So here we have this graph, and I'm going to go ahead and move this to a separate worksheet so we can see more detail. But it's being driven by these results above. By right-clicking in the free space on the chart, I can say Move Chart to a new sheet that will give us a nice big window to look at. Now I'm going to click on this plus symbol and I'm going to add axis titles, uh, chart title, and um, of course a legend. If you have more than one series you'll need a legend to be able to differentiate um, what each result is. So real quickly the vertical axis is percent or relative frequency. The horizontal axis in this case um, is made up of hypothetical grades and this chart is a comparison of grade distributions and more specifically using percent polygons. We'll enter and that's a pretty nice graph. You can see very quickly visually um, where students did well compared to where students really struggled um, on the higher end of this distribution. Notice that we have these nice clean finishes at zero. Um, that's what we got when we put in the 1.1 which had no outcomes. Now these tails which can appear on both sides of your data can be fixed if we go back to the data, we only need one zero on each side, so we can highlight, click and drag to highlight, and then delete all of these preceding zeros, which will button that graph up nicely and eliminate those trailing tails. So 
Once again, this is how you use the data analysis tool pack to generate frequency and relative frequency distributions um, to quickly get a simple histogram and then to eventually build a percent polygon illustrating the differences between several distributions. Thanks for watching and I hope that this helped.